welcome to the Squirrel Tale. On this video, I'm going to take a look at what is almost my first powder horn. Um, my actual first horn is a little priming horn. I have somewhere in a drawer somewhere. When I find it, I will do a short on it, but it's real simple little thing and probably not worth doing a whole video on. But this is my first real attempt at horn work. Um, and I'm going to go through, kind of go through what I did good starting out. Um, and the things I did wrong, which... Like anyone where they start, there's a lot of mistakes. Um, so a little history on my history with horn work. So in 2009, I went to the Dixon's Gunmakers Fair. We've always, my family's always had a muzzleloader interest, but I went down there in 2009 and. That's, I ended up buying two of these horns, or actually, I think my father bought these horns for me. I would have been thir 12 or 13 at the time. Yeah, something like that. Pretty young. I was pretty young, 12, yeah, 12, 13 years old, so, um... Bought these, and I bought um, Scott Sibley's Recreating the Powder Horn. I believe that's correct. I'll have a link. That book, and that's kind of how I got started. I made that little priming horn, and then I dove into this. Um, so, the first thing I want to talk about with this horn is... My material selection, you know, when I bought this, when I, you know, you went, most of you know, if you go to the shows, they have a big pile of horn, you go through, you dig through them and try to find what you want. I do not think I would have, today, I don't think I would have picked up this horn, but I didn't know what I was looking at at the time, so, few of the things that... I see you with the horn I picked. Um, at least if I would have bought this, I wouldn't have done what I did with it today. Um, or did with it back then. Or It doesn't have much twist. The color isn't great if you're doing a for tr an attempt at engraving horn, which you will see. Um, which I'll talk about later. And the big thing in, in relation to the butt plug is very thick on like two-thirds of it and then it goes down to be relatively I mean that's still thick but relatively skinny it goes probably about from five sixteenths at the thickest down to about eighth inch maybe three sixteenths on the skinniest point so very thick um, horn, it could have been workable, but if I would have been, if I would have had this horn today, I would have spent some time really scraping and filing this down to make it more even, and that's probably one of the first flaws I'll point out is that doesn't look good when you have an uneven plug around this. You want to, I always, when I make a horn, I don't have one without a plug that I've worked. But I always want to try to make that as even as possible. Scrape it down to get it even. But with the plug, I have a... I believe this is just a piece of pine. Yeah, just a piece of... Probably about three-quarter inch pine board. I put it in flat... And then I put in, I kind of tried to chisel in like a, some crude incest carving of a barn symbol. I forget the name. They're a Dutch symbol. I tried to put on the plate. Again, not uh, greatest, but I was also young. So, 
you know, it's acceptable, I guess. And now coming down to the body, um, so when it comes to the engraving, oh, another, another note, I have, I think, quite a few, like, eight iron pegs holding it together. I typically use wooden pegs unless the horn, for whatever reason, really, I feel needs the iron. Like, I'm looking off an original picture, but that's not my preferred way to attach plugs anymore. And I don't like that many in there. Just to make some more work. Um, looking at the engraving, the first thing I will say with my engraving is this horn due to the coloration, really didn't lend itself to engraving. Um, you know, it's a dark colored horn. This would have probably been less left without it, but simple text, you know, it says David Belzer, his horn, 2009. So this would have been made in August, maybe, August, September, I'm thinking of 2009. So, a little over a month after the Gunmakers Fair. I mean, so about this time of year, 2009, that would have been 10, 12, 13, 13 years ago. So, yeah, about... Yeah, 13 years ago this horn was made. So, you know, I did that. And, I mean, the engraving itself I think is okay. I mean, it's about as simple as you can get. And I will be honest, my engraving hasn't improved much. If I look at my last piece of engraving. Now, obviously, I picked a whiter horn to do this on, but... That's something I need to put the time into work on. I just got a new tool. I'm going to do that. So, the engravings, what it is, again, in a corner of this color shouldn't be engraved. Now, moving on to the neck of the horn. Now, one thing I will say, and I... When you want to do, there's a thing called the golden mean. If you look it up, um, I don't want to misquote it. But basically, you want the horn to follow this golden mean. I think it's, I don't want to give the exact numbers, but Google it. Because um, I, I don't want to say two-thirds or two-fifths and have it be wrong. But there's a certain proportion that the neck of the horn in this should be um so you can see this this looks pretty good on where I put my neck compared to the length of the body a little bit under half this I have right at about halfway where the neck is about half the length of the body, maybe even a hair longer. Which doesn't look that great. If I were making this horn today, I would probably put the neck right here. A little in. And that would make it look attractive. But the carving itself, I don't think I did bad for flats. If I, I think this has seven flats too. Which can make it hard to do, but I think I have seven flats. They look okay. They are not as fin like finely finished as I should have done. You know, you can see the edges still have some cleanup work that could have been done. Extra couple. I mean, the flats itself, two three hours with a, or maybe even an hour with a some cleanup. Would have made this look significantly better. So. That's. 
kind of my, but again, I don't think that's, by no means, I would say that those flats are one of the stronger points of this horn. Moving down to this ring, um, this should have been skinnier, and that groove should have been wider on my most recent horn. And now this horn is my most recent work. It is by no means perfect. There's a whole video on this horn in my critique sheet from the Gunmakers Fair. But that's kind of more what you want. Oh, wider groove, skinnier. And then I just have this proportion, this portion rounded off. Okay. And then I really didn't do nothing with the tip and the peg is long gone. This horn's been basically floating around in boxes and drawers for, um, you know, over 10 years now. So, yeah, the peg is obviously missing. I should have probably shaped this up, domed it around, kind of like this guy has a nice little round dance, but, you know, it's okay, I guess. Again, it's my early work, and I accept that, that yeah, it's not going to be perfect, but that's kind of, the, you know, some of the things that I see that I improve, I have improved on. Still have a ways to go, but um, but yeah, there's there's a look at my first horn I ever made, or my technically my second horn, but my first real attempt at a full size powder horn. So kind of neat to look back on what I did 13 years ago. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Um. I do, I do have some of my other early horn work I'm going to be taking a look at. Um, so make sure you like and subscribe and have a good day. Thanks for watching. Remember to like, comment, subscribe for more great content. And check out our Instagram page at, at Squirrel Tail Show.